Jazzcast Pros. Hello, my sleep inquisitive friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Doze Podcast, where our conversations circle around ways to promote your best sleep to protect your best self. I'm your host, Soda Kuchkowski. And in the spirit of best self, I thought I'd use this episode as a mid year check in. You know, I just got back from a family vacation and I thought I would be raring to go. You know, the summer is in full swing. We have access to natural vitamin D. It's plentiful, but I still find myself moving slower and not as productive as I would like to be. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, you have to speed up. There's so much to do. But my body lately has been saying, no, take the time because you need this. And how do I know? Well, as I've mentioned previously, I was in a car accident almost nine years ago. And of course, in my youth and as a new mom and someone who worked out avidly at the time, I initially thought I was fine, but shortly after, time proved me wrong, and I suffered both injuries to my neck and my back. And I tell you this because one way my body signals that I'm not taking the right kind of break that I need is that my injuries start to flare up and I experience pain. So whether you're someone who can relate to this Or if you may be feeling like the summer has you more down than up for one reason or another, stay with me because life always has a way of reminding us it may be time for a reset. Now, to put this all into context, while my vacation was relaxing, you know, we spent time floating in the lazy river, taking walks, playing games, and yes, visiting a park, we selected Universal Studios this trip. I know this all started because of the bed that we slept in. Now, while it looked good, it was California-sized, you know, which my husband and I love because it allowed us each have our own individual space. You know, the sheets were soft and the pillows were plentiful. The issue was in the mattress. It was much firmer than our one at home. So while everything else was going well and our sleep, you know, even though we slept deep and long, it also produced stiffness and inflammation in our bodies. Now, if you caught my last episode, I shared my sleep kit for optimizing your sleep while away from home. But as life would have it, you know, another variable was thrown my way. Now, I did get enough sleep and I did still feel rested, but the effects of sleeping on a much firmer mattress brought that pain to the forefront for me, especially now that I'm back home in my ideal sleep space. Just like our sleep, there is something that can create ripples that can create pain, like how life variables can create sleep troubles. So when they arise, you have to address them right away before it gets out of hand. Now, it's easy to say, oh, you know, it's not that bad. But the minute I find myself reaching for an Advil more than once, that to me is an issue because there are natural ways to actively manage pain that I would prefer. And the sooner it's taken care of during the day, the less likely it is to trickle into the night. Now, depending on the level of your pain, there are different things you can do, some more costly than others. But I want to take our time today to share with you the steps that I take working through mine in hopes that it may help you as well. So first, I make sure that I haven't gotten away from stretching when I go to sleep and when I wake up. You know, during sleep, we tend to put our limbs in awkward positions that can restrict blood flow, cause tension, and put pressure on areas that may already be sore. You know, for instance, my neck feeling tense has also started to aggravate my TMD, my TMJ. Second, I jump into reintroducing myofascial exercises. I have a doctor friend of mine who is a TMD, TMJ specialist, Dr. Jeffrey Dolgos, and he made the mouth guard that I wear at night, but he also created an entire catalog of videos on YouTube dedicated to teaching his patients easy exercises to do to relieve jaw pressure and tension that can also help when your back issues are aggravated. And I'll share the link for that in my show notes. So prior to COVID, we actually also used to host yoga for the airway events because he also has tips that will help those who suffer from sleep apnea naturally, and I'll add those as well. Next, I make sure that my magnesium spray is in hand. You know, as a matter of fact, if I'm experiencing pain, I increase the frequency of which I use it, including carry it around in my bag for when I need a retouch. Magnesium chloride topical spray gets used directly on where you might be feeling pain, and for me, it's my neck and my lower back, and just a few sprays will do. I use mine in the morning and in the evening, but I can tell you, unless it's by my bedside, I too can forget to use it, but it's a real game changer for both my pain and sleep. And if my pain is really bad, I do use a CBD salve stick that has Delta 9 in it, and that's my go-to if my pain is extreme. And I have to tell you, I've been grateful that I have both of these natural ways to relieve it without the need for pain medication. 
Now, I mentioned stretching and the facial exercises, but the question I pose to myself when I'm experiencing pain is how much am I moving? Now, it may seem that if you're in pain, it's the last thing you should be doing, but trust me, it isn't. Movement plays a crucial role in not only managing my pain and your pain if you're experiencing it, but can significantly improve how well you feel overall. You know, in some important ways that it does this is first, it improves circulation. Movement helps to increase blood flow, which can reduce inflammation and promote healing. And improved circulation delivers more oxygen and nutrients to the affected areas, aiding in tissue repair and reducing pain. It can help in reducing stiffness. Our lack of movement can lead to stiffness in the joints and muscles. So gentle movement and stretching can help maintain or improve flexibility and range of motion, which can alleviate that stiffness and discomfort. It releases endorphins. Physical activity stimulates the release of endorphins, which are the body's natural painkillers. And these chemicals interact with receptors in the brain to reduce the perception of pain and trigger a positive feeling in the body. It helps to strengthen muscles. Strengthening the muscles around the painful area can provide better support and reduce strain on joints and other structures. And this can help prevent further injury and decrease pain over time. It improves mood and reduces stress. Exercise is known to improve mood and reduce anxiety and depression, which can be particularly beneficial for those dealing with chronic pain. You know, and a better mood can enhance your pain tolerance and overall quality of life. Movement can help prevent deconditioning. You know, prolonged inactivity can lead to deconditioning where muscles weaken and joints lose their range of motion. And this can make pain worse and create a cycle of increasing immobility and discomfort. So regular movement helps to maintain physical fitness and prevent this downward spiral. It helps to promote better posture. You know, especially exercises focused on core strength and flexibility can improve posture. Good posture reduces the strain in muscles on joints, which can help alleviate pain. I know that when I'm sitting down, I try to always make sure that I'm keeping an open and up posture because if you're slouching, that, of course, creates that additional strain on your neck, especially if you're someone who tends to scroll and you kind of hunch over when you do so. It helps to support mental health. Engaging in regular movement can distract from pain, so it also reduces that feeling of helplessness and frustration that can often accompany chronic pain. And last, of course, it enhances your sleep quality. Regular physical activity can help regulate your sleep patterns, making it easier to fall asleep and to stay asleep. So better sleep can lead to a reduction in pain sensitivity and improvement in overall pain management. And as I mentioned, some of the movement ways that you might consider are gentle stretching, which can help maintain flexibility and reduce that stiffness. Low-impact aerobic exercise, activities like walking or swimming. You can actually exercise in the pool, right, which can also help with not putting too much stress on the joints. Things like yoga and tai chi. These practices combine movement with mindfulness that can improve flexibility, strength, and your mental well-being. And physical therapy. A physical therapist can create a tailored exercise program that considers your specific pain conditions and limitations. So it's important to remember that regardless of your choice of movement, that you want to start slowly and choose activities that you enjoy and that you can perform comfortably. You also might want to consider consulting with a healthcare professional, such as a physical therapist, who can help develop a safe and effective exercise plan tailored to your needs. The goal is to keep moving within your limits to improve your pain and overall quality of life. You know, for me personally, I'm going to get back into the gym and start walking on the treadmill and also start incorporating nightly walks with my family once the sun sets. And we have a new puppy, so we also have that as a motivating factor working for us. So the message that I hope you take away from our conversation today is to listen to yourself. Your body will signal to you before your mind communicates a change is needed. It gives you information about your health and wellness every single day. Allowing yourself to be in tune with how you feel emotionally and physically helps you to have better control over your health and your sleep. As always, thank you for listening. Until next time, I'm back every Wednesday with a new episode ready to empower you to take control of your sleep. I still have lots to share with you as we work together towards creating solutions around your unique sleep challenges and needs. Until then, remember your pure potential if you change how well you sleep.